Thanks to unprecedented investments, funding for K-12 public schools represents more than half of the state's two-year operating budget. This is good news. However, our funding formulas weren't built for emergencies when school buildings are closed for extended periods of time. Washington State PTA recognizes that the state is facing a significant budget shortfall and appreciates that lawmakers are trying to avoid cuts to programs that support the state's most vulnerable populations. We know there are no easy choices, no quick solutions, no magic wand. COVID-19 has wreaked havoc in our state and our K-12 system and students have been hit especially hard. We know that the transition to online learning is leaving many students behind. While districts are doing their best to keep students enrolled and engaged, the cost of transitioning to a mostly virtual model poses unexpected challenges. Many expenses to operate remotely and safely are outside of existing budgets, federal stimulus funds, or basic education funding formulas. Washington State PTA has four major asks. Protect existing funding programs. Authorize flexibility in funding whenever possible. Ensure equitable solutions. And prioritize new or recovered revenues. Student enrollment has declined this school year, but current staff and transportation contracts were finalized last year. Any cuts to this year's funding based on enrollment will only cut essential student programs and services. Our school buses are a lifeline. They bring school and other supplies to our students when those students are not able to be in our schools in person. While the number of students riding buses is significantly smaller, it costs the same to transport seven kids as 70 kids. Many programs funded under the basic education umbrella have strings in the way they can be used. This is the time to offer short-term flexibility to districts to use funds in a way to best meet the needs of their students families, and community. Contrary to many beliefs, not all K-12 funding is protected under the state constitution. Critically Needed Local Effort Assistance Funding, or LEA, gives property poor districts funds they cannot raise with local levies and helps fund the same locally determined activities that property rich districts can afford. For example, the Spokane School District employs 25 nurses, but is only state funded for four. A smaller district, Medical Lake is funded at 0.49 of a nurse, but they use LEA to support two full-time nurses. We appreciate the new federal stimulus and suggest prioritizing some of that funding to support critical education programs such as early learning, access to higher education, child care, before and after school programs, as well as programs that support our most vulnerable students, those with disabilities, English language learners, students who are homeless, our foster youth, and those who are struggling and need to make up for lost learning. We also ask policymakers to keep the following in mind. Food insecurity is all too real for students and school meals need to be provided. We need to support the social and emotional health of our students and educators during and after this pandemic. And students with disabilities face vast educational challenges. It's time to lift the cap and support these students especially now as so many are being left behind. If new state revenues are pursued, we advocate for progressive measures. Regressive taxes hurt the very people who need financial assistance the most. When you add up all the local and state taxes paid by Washingtonians, the lowest level of income earners pay 18% in total taxes due to our high reliance on sales and property taxes, while our top earners pay only 3% of their income in taxes. This makes Washington one of the most regressive states in the U.S. Please go to the Washington State PTA website's advocacy page for additional information on this issue. Preserving education funding is crucial at this time to support all Washington students so they can realize their full potential.